Meet Mark, a 40-year-old project manager who had always been diligent about his work but never quite managed to get a handle on his finances. Despite earning a decent salary, he often found himself living paycheck to paycheck, with little to show for his hard work. One day, Mark stumbled upon the concept of atomic habits applied to finance. Inspired, he decided to start small. He began by setting a goal to save a small amount from each paycheck. He set up an automatic transfer to his savings account on payday, making it easy and nearly effortless. Encouraged by his progress, Mark looked for other ways to improve his financial habits. He started tracking his expenses, using an app to categorize his spending. This made it obvious where he could cut back and save more. Mark also applied the principle of habit stacking. After reviewing his expenses, he would spend just 10 minutes every evening reviewing his financial goals and planning his budget for the next day. This simple habit helped him stay focused and on track with his financial goals. As Mark continued to implement these atomic habits, he began to see significant improvements in his financial situation. He had built up a substantial emergency fund, paid off high interest debt, and even started investing a portion of his savings. By the time Mark turned 41, he had transformed his financial habits and secured a more stable financial future for himself and his family. All thanks to the power of atomic habit small changes that had a big impact over time. Now I'm going to explain to you 15 most important points from the book, Atomic Habits, by James Clear. Sink your mind onto the process of money making and improving your life. If you haven't improved your life, nobody will care about you. It's your life. Make it big. And I'm also with you today. So listen to me loud and clear. When I'm explaining you the most important points, sometimes pause the video, rewind and listen to the important points again and again until it sink into your mind. That's very important. So listen to me. So let's begin my friend. Number 15. The 1% Rule. The 1% rule, often called the principle of marginal gains, suggests that making small, incremental improvements consistently over time can lead to significant results. This concept applies to various aspects of life, showing how minor changes can accumulate into remarkable outcomes. In personal finance, small adjustments can make a big difference. For example, Increasing monthly investment contributions by just 1% can lead to substantial growth in an investment portfolio over time. Saving 1% more of income each month can result in significant savings. Even in debt management, paying just 1% more towards the principal each month can lead to substantial interest savings over the life of the loan. In health and fitness, small improvements can lead to significant changes. Incrementally increasing the intensity or duration of workouts by 1% each week can lead to notable improvements in fitness levels over time. Similarly, making small, sustainable changes to diet, such as reducing sugar intake by 1% each week, can have long-term health benefits. In education and skill development, dedicating just 1% of the day to learning a new skill or studying a relevant topic can result in significant knowledge gain over time. Networking can also benefit from the 1% rule, as consistently investing 1% of your time in building relationships can lead to a strong network over time. In relationships, spending just 1% more quality time with your loved ones each day can strengthen your relationships over time. Improving communication by just 1% can lead to better understanding and stronger bonds. Even in environmental impact, small changes can make a big difference. Making small adjustments to reduce waste or conserve energy by just 1% each week or month can lead to significant reductions in environmental footprint over time. The 1% rule emphasizes the importance of consistency and persistence in achieving long-term goals. By making small, incremental changes and sticking with them over time, individuals can achieve remarkable results in various aspects of their lives. Number 14, Habit Loop. Changing behavior can be a daunting task, but understanding the principles behind it can make the process more manageable. 
James Clear, in his book, Atomic Habits, outlines the four laws of behavior change as a framework to create and sustain positive habits. These laws, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying, provide a roadmap for individuals seeking to change their habits. Let's delve into each of these laws, supported by real-life examples, to understand how they work. The first law emphasizes the importance of making the desired behavior obvious and visible. When a behavior is easy to see and notice, it becomes more likely to be performed. One way to apply this law is through the use of cues. Cues are triggers that prompt a specific behavior. For example, placing a bowl of fruit on the kitchen counter serves as a visual cue to encourage healthy snacking. Similarly, laying out workout clothes the night before can make it more likely for someone to exercise in the morning. In real life, businesses often use this principle to encourage specific behaviors. Supermarkets strategically place essential items like milk and bread at the back of the store to make customers pass by other products, increasing the likelihood of impulse purchases. The second law focuses on making the desired behavior attractive. Human behavior is often driven by the anticipation of reward or pleasure. By associating positive feelings with a behavior, individuals are more likely to repeat it. One way to make a behavior attractive is by adding an element of enjoyment or satisfaction. For instance, joining a group fitness class can make exercising more enjoyable than doing it alone. In marketing, this principle is used to make products and services appealing to consumers. Companies use attractive packaging, compelling advertisements, and endorsements from influencers to make their products more desirable. The third law suggests that behaviors should be made as easy as possible to perform. People are more likely to engage in activities that require minimal effort. This can be achieved by breaking down the desired behavior into smaller, manageable steps. For example, flossing one tooth a day can lead to the development of a consistent flossing habit. Technology has made it easier than ever to adopt new habits. Apps that track daily water intake, for instance, can remind users to drink water regularly and make it easier to monitor their progress. The fourth law emphasizes the importance of immediate and tangible rewards to reinforce the desired behavior. When a behavior is followed by a rewarding experience, the brain is more likely to remember it and repeat it in the future. For example, Receiving praise from a manager for completing a project on time can motivate an employee to continue meeting deadlines. In education, teachers often use rewards such as stickers or extra playtime to motivate students to complete tasks or behave in a certain way. The four laws of behavior change provide a practical framework for understanding how habits are formed and can be modified. By making behaviors obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying, individuals can increase their chances of successfully adopting new habits and breaking old ones. Whether you're looking to exercise more, eat healthier, or improve your productivity, applying these laws can help you achieve your goals. Number 13. Q. Cues play a fundamental role in our daily lives, often guiding our behaviors without us even realizing it. These cues can be both obvious and subtle, internal and external and understanding them can help us better understand why we do what we do. One of the most basic examples of a cue is the alarm clock. The sound of the alarm in the morning serves as a cue for many people to wake up and start their day. Without this cue, they might oversleep or struggle to get out of bed on time. The alarm clock is a simple yet powerful external cue that influences our behavior. Internal cues, on the other hand, can be more complex. For example, feeling hungry is an internal cue that can trigger the behavior of eating. This cue is driven by our body's physiological needs and is essential for survival. However, internal cues can also be influenced by external factors, such as the sight or smell of food, which can increase our feelings of hunger. Cues can also be more subtle and indirect. For example, Seeing a picture of a beach vacation might serve as a cue for someone to start saving money for their next trip. This cue is not a direct trigger but rather a reminder of a desired outcome that prompts a specific behavior. 
In many cases, cues become associated with certain behaviors through a process known as classical conditioning. This concept, famously studied by Ivan Pavlov with his dogs, explains how a neutral stimulus, like a bell, can become a cue for a specific behavior, like salivating, when paired with a natural stimulus, like food. In modern society, cues are everywhere, and marketers often use them to influence consumer behavior. For example, the sight of a fast food restaurant's logo can serve as a cue for someone to feel hungry and crave a burger and fries. Similarly, the sound of a soda can opening can be a cue for someone to feel thirsty and want a drink. However, cues are not always beneficial. In some cases, they can lead to unhealthy behaviors, such as smoking or overeating. For example, the sight of a cigarette pack can serve as a cue for someone to smoke, even if they are trying to quit. Likewise, the smell of freshly baked cookies can be a cue for someone to indulge in unhealthy eating habits. Understanding cues and their influence on behavior is crucial for making positive changes in our lives. By identifying the cues that trigger unwanted behaviors, we can take steps to change our environment or routines to avoid them. Similarly, we can use cues to our advantage by creating environments that promote healthy habits. Cues are powerful triggers that influence our behavior in profound ways. Whether they are external or internal, obvious or hidden, cues play a crucial role in shaping our actions and decisions. By understanding and managing these cues, we can take control of our behavior and make positive changes in our lives. Number 12. Craving. Craving is a compelling force in our lives, guiding our actions and influencing our behaviors. It's the deep, sometimes unconscious desire for a specific outcome or experience, often linked to the anticipation of pleasure or relief from discomfort. Understanding craving is crucial because it underpins many of our habits and behaviors, shaping our daily routines and long-term goals. Craving can be broadly defined as a strong, often overwhelming desire for something. This something can vary widely, from food and drinks to experiences, emotions, or even material possessions. Cravings can be triggered by external stimuli, such as sights, smells, or sounds, as well as internal factors like emotions or memories. When we experience a craving, we often feel a sense of urgency or compulsion to satisfy it, even if we know it may not be in our best interest. One of the most common examples of craving is the desire for certain foods. Many of us have experienced a sudden, intense craving for a specific food, such as pizza, ice cream, or chocolate. This craving is often driven by the anticipation of the taste and texture of the food, as well as the pleasure it brings. Cravings for food can be triggered by external cues, such as seeing or smelling the food, or internal cues, such as feeling hungry or stressed. Cravings can also be linked to habits. Habits are behaviors that we repeat regularly, often without conscious thought. Cravings play a crucial role in the formation and maintenance of habits because they provide the motivation or drive behind the behavior. For example, if you have a habit of snacking while watching TV, your craving for a snack may be triggered by the sight or sound of the TV turning on, leading you to seek out food even if you're not hungry. Cravings can also be associated with emotions. For example, some people may crave the feeling of excitement or thrill that comes from engaging in risky behavior, such as gambling or extreme sports. Others may crave the comfort and security of familiar surroundings or routines when they are feeling anxious or stressed. Cravings are not always related to physical needs or desires. They can also be linked to psychological or emotional needs. For example, Someone who craves attention and validation from others may seek out social media likes and comments to satisfy this craving. Similarly, someone who craves a sense of accomplishment or mastery may immerse themselves in work or hobbies that provide a sense of achievement. Cravings can be powerful motivators, driving us to seek out the things we desire most. However, they can also be problematic if they lead us to engage in unhealthy or harmful behaviors. Learning to recognize and manage our cravings can help us make more conscious choices and lead happier, 
more fulfilling lives. Number 11. Response. When we talk about the response to a craving, we're delving into the heart of behavior and habit formation. The response is the action we take when faced with a craving, whether it's grabbing a snack, checking our phone, or engaging in a certain behavior. This response can be physical, mental, or emotional, and it's often driven by the desire to satisfy the craving and experience the associated reward. Physical responses to cravings are perhaps the most tangible. Imagine you're at work, and suddenly you crave a sugary snack. Your physical response might be to walk to the vending machine and buy a candy bar. This physical action satisfies the craving for something sweet, providing a quick burst of pleasure or energy. Mental responses to cravings are less visible but equally powerful. For example, imagine you're trying to quit smoking, and you suddenly crave a cigarette. Your mental response might be to rationalize why it's okay to have just one, despite your desire to quit. This mental gymnastics is a response to the craving for nicotine and the relief it provides. Emotional responses to cravings are deeply rooted in our feelings and moods. For instance, imagine you're feeling stressed at work, and you crave the comfort of your favorite comfort food. Your emotional response might be to order takeout or raid the office snack drawer. This emotional response seeks to soothe your stress and provide a sense of comfort and familiarity. Responses to cravings are often automatic and ingrained, especially for habits that have been repeated over time. These responses can be triggered by cues in our environment, such as the sight or smell of food, or internal cues, such as emotions or memories. For example, seeing a commercial for pizza might trigger a craving for pizza, leading to the response of ordering a pizza for dinner. The key to understanding and managing responses to cravings lies in recognizing the underlying cues and patterns that drive our behavior. By becoming more aware of these cues and the resulting responses, we can begin to make more conscious choices about how we respond to cravings. This might involve finding healthier alternatives to satisfy cravings, such as choosing a piece of fruit instead of a candy bar or finding ways to address the underlying emotional or psychological factors driving the craving. The response to a craving is a complex interplay of physical, mental, and emotional factors. By understanding these factors and learning to recognize the cues that trigger our cravings, we can begin to make more conscious choices about our behavior and ultimately lead healthier, more fulfilling lives. Number 10. Reward. The reward is a critical component of the craving response reward cycle that drives habit formation. It serves as the reinforcement for our behaviors, making it more likely that we will repeat those behaviors in the future. Understanding the nature of rewards and how they influence our habits can help us make more conscious choices and change our behavior for the better. When we experience a craving and engage in a behavior to satisfy that craving, the reward we receive plays a key role in reinforcing that behavior. This reinforcement is driven by the release of neurotransmitters in the brain, such as dopamine, which are associated with pleasure and reward. When we receive a reward, our brain learns to associate the behavior that led to that reward with pleasure, making it more likely that we will repeat that behavior in the future. The reward doesn't have to be a physical or tangible object. It can also be a feeling or emotion that we experience as a result of our behavior. For example, imagine you're trying to develop a habit of going for a run every morning. The physical reward of the run itself might be the endorphin rush and sense of accomplishment you feel afterward. This positive feeling serves as a reward for your behavior, reinforcing the habit of running each morning. In some cases, the reward can be more immediate and tangible. For example, Imagine you're trying to break the habit of snacking on unhealthy foods in the afternoon. Instead, you decide to snack on fruits or vegetables. The reward in this case might be the taste of the healthy snack, the feeling of fullness and satisfaction it provides, or the knowledge that you're making a healthier choice. These rewards reinforce the behavior of choosing healthy snacks over unhealthy ones, making it more likely that you'll continue to do so in the future. The power of rewards in shaping our behavior is well documented in psychology. B.F. Skinner, a renowned psychologist, 
demonstrated the concept of operant conditioning, which is based on the idea that behavior is shaped by its consequences. According to Skinner, behaviors that are followed by positive consequences are more likely to be repeated, while those that are followed by negative consequences are less likely to be repeated. In the context of habit formation, rewards serve as the positive consequences that reinforce our behaviors. When we receive a reward for engaging in a behavior, our brain learns to associate that behavior with pleasure, making it more likely that we will repeat that behavior in the future. This process is known as reinforcement learning and is a fundamental mechanism underlying habit formation. One important aspect of rewards is that they can vary in their effectiveness depending on the individual and the context. What one person finds rewarding, another person may not. For example, some people may find the taste of a healthy snack rewarding, while others may find it less satisfying. Similarly, the effectiveness of a reward can depend on the context in which it is received. For example, a reward that is given immediately after a behavior is more effective than one that is delayed. In addition, the effectiveness of a reward can change over time, what was once rewarding may become less so as we become accustomed to it. This phenomenon, known as habituation, can occur with both positive and negative rewards. For example, the taste of a healthy snack may become less rewarding over time as we become accustomed to it, making it less effective in reinforcing the behavior of choosing healthy snacks. To overcome habituation and maintain the effectiveness of rewards, it's important to vary the rewards we receive for our behaviors. This can involve changing the type of reward, the timing of the reward, or the context in which the reward is received. By varying the rewards we receive, we can keep our behaviors fresh and engaging, making it more likely that we will continue to engage in them in the future. The reward is a critical component of the craving response reward cycle that drives habit formation. By understanding the nature of rewards and how they influence our behavior, we can make more conscious choices about the behaviors we engage in and change our habits for the better. Whether it's the taste of a healthy snack, the feeling of accomplishment after a run, or the sense of satisfaction from completing a task, rewards play a key role in shaping our behavior and helping us achieve our goals. Number 9. Habit Stacking. Habit stacking is a powerful strategy for building new habits by attaching them to existing habits. The idea behind habit stacking is to piggyback on habits that are already established in your routine, making it easier to adopt new behaviors. By linking a new habit to a habit you already do consistently, you can leverage the momentum of the existing habit to help the new habit stick. For example, if you already have a habit of brushing your teeth every morning, you could stack a new habit of doing 10 minutes of stretching immediately after brushing your teeth. Because you're already in the habit of brushing your teeth, adding the stretching routine right after can make it more likely that you'll remember to do it consistently. The key to habit stacking is to choose habits that naturally flow into each other and to be consistent in linking them together. It's also important to start small and gradually increase the complexity of the stacked habits as you become more comfortable with the routine. Another example of habit stacking is to link a habit of drinking a glass of water with every meal. If you already have the habit of eating meals regularly, adding the habit of drinking water with each meal can help you stay hydrated throughout the day. Habit stacking can also be used to create a sequence of habits that you do in a specific order. For example, you could create a bedtime routine that includes habits like brushing your teeth, washing your face, and reading a book. By stacking these habits together in a specific order, you can create a consistent bedtime routine that helps you wind down and prepare for sleep. Habit stacking is a simple but effective strategy for building new habits. By attaching new habits to existing ones, you can leverage the power of routine to make it easier to adopt new behaviors and achieve your goals. Number 8. Environment Design. Environment design, also known as choice architecture, is a powerful strategy for shaping behavior by modifying the physical or social environment in which decisions are made. By making desired behaviors easier and more convenient, and undesired behaviors more difficult or inconvenient, you can significantly impact your habits and make positive changes in your life. 
One of the key principles of environment design is the concept of nudging, which involves gently guiding people toward better choices without restricting their freedom of choice. This can be achieved by making small changes to the environment that steer people toward desired behaviors. For example, placing healthy snacks at eye level in a cafeteria can nudge people to choose them over less healthy options. Another principle of environment design is to remove or reduce cues that trigger undesired behaviors. For example, if you're trying to cut back on screen time before bed, you might remove the TV from your bedroom or set a rule to keep your phone out of reach at night. Environment design can also involve creating physical or visual cues that remind you to engage in desired behaviors. For example, Placing a water bottle on your desk can serve as a visual cue to drink more water throughout the day. Similarly, setting out your workout clothes the night before can serve as a reminder to exercise in the morning. Social norms and expectations can also be powerful influences on behavior. By surrounding yourself with people who engage in the behaviors you want to adopt, you can create a social environment that supports your goals. For example, Joining a running group can make it easier to stick to a regular running routine. In addition to modifying your physical environment, you can also use technology to support your habits. For example, using a habit tracking app can help you monitor your progress and stay motivated. Similarly, setting up automatic reminders or notifications can help reinforce desired behaviors. Real-life examples of environment design can be found in many aspects of daily life. For example, many workplaces have implemented standing desks or walking meetings to encourage employees to be more active during the day. Similarly, some grocery stores have placed healthier options at eye level and less healthy options on higher or lower shelves to encourage shoppers to make better choices. Another example of environment design is the use of traffic calming measures to reduce speeding and improve road safety. By implementing features such as speed bumps, narrower lanes, and pedestrian crossings, cities can encourage drivers to slow down and be more mindful of their surroundings. In the realm of health and wellness, many people have successfully used environment design to improve their eating habits. For example, keeping a bowl of fruit on the kitchen counter can make it easier to choose a healthy snack over a less nutritious option. Similarly, rearranging the pantry so that healthier foods are more accessible can help reduce the temptation to indulge in unhealthy snacks. Environment design can also be used to promote positive social interactions. For example, some communities have created shared spaces such as community gardens or playgrounds to encourage residents to come together and interact with one another. Overall, Environment design is a versatile and effective strategy for shaping behavior and building habits. By making small changes to your environment, you can make it easier to adopt desired behaviors and more difficult to engage in undesired ones. Whether you're trying to eat healthier, exercise more, or reduce screen time, modifying your environment can help you achieve your goals and improve your overall well-being. Number 7. Implementation Intention Implementation intention is a psychological concept that refers to the planning out of specific actions in advance, including when and where you will take those actions. By specifying the exact circumstances in which you will perform a behavior, you make it more likely that you will follow through. The idea behind implementation intention is to bridge the gap between intention and action by creating a clear plan for how you will act in a given situation. This can be particularly helpful for forming new habits or breaking old ones, as it helps to automate the decision-making process and reduces the likelihood of procrastination or forgetfulness. For example, if you want to start exercising regularly, you might create an implementation intention by saying, I will go for a 30-minute run in the park every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday after work. By specifying the time, after work, and the place, the park, you make it easier to follow through on your intention to exercise. Implementation intentions can also be used to break old habits. For example, if you want to stop snacking late at night, you might create an implementation intention by saying, when I feel the urge to snack after 9 p.m., I will drink a glass of water and brush my teeth instead. Again, by specifying the circumstances in which you will act, 
feeling the urge to snack after 9 pm, and the alternative behavior you will engage in, drinking water and brushing your teeth, you make it more likely that you will follow through on your intention. Research has shown that implementation intentions can be an effective strategy for behavior change. One study found that people who formed implementation intentions were more likely to exercise regularly compared to those who simply set a goal to exercise. In addition to specifying the when and where of a behavior, implementation intentions can also be used to overcome potential obstacles. For example, if you anticipate that bad weather might prevent you from going for a run in the park, you could create an implementation intention by saying, if it's raining on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday after work, I will go to the gym instead. This way, you have a backup plan in place to ensure that you can still follow through on your intention to exercise. Overall, implementation intention is a powerful tool for behavior change. By planning out when and where you will take specific actions, you can make it more likely that you will follow through on your intentions and achieve your goals. Number 6. Habit Tracking. Habit tracking is a simple yet effective strategy for building and maintaining habits. It involves keeping track of your habits visually, often using a habit tracker or a simple calendar, to help you stay motivated and accountable. By recording your progress and seeing your accomplishments over time, you can reinforce positive behaviors and identify areas for improvement. There are many ways to track your habits, and the method you choose will depend on your preferences and goals. Some people prefer to use a physical planner or journal to track their habits, while others use digital apps or spreadsheets. Whatever method you choose, the key is to make it easy and convenient so that you're more likely to stick with it. One of the main benefits of habit tracking is that it provides a visual representation of your progress. Seeing a streak of successful days can be incredibly motivating and can encourage you to keep going, even when you don't feel like it. On the other hand, seeing gaps in your progress can help you identify patterns and obstacles that may be preventing you from sticking to your habits. Habit tracking can also help you stay accountable to yourself. By recording your habits regularly, you create a sense of commitment to yourself to follow through on your goals. This can be especially helpful for habits that require consistency and discipline, such as exercising regularly or eating healthily. Another benefit of habit tracking is that it allows you to see the cumulative effect of your habits over time. Small, consistent actions can add up to significant results over time, and habit tracking helps you visualize this progress. This can be particularly motivating during times when you feel like your efforts aren't paying off. In addition to tracking your habits, you can also use habit tracking to experiment with new habits and routines. By tracking the impact of different habits on your life, you can identify which ones are most effective and sustainable for you. This can help you make informed decisions about which habits to prioritize and which ones to let go of. Habit tracking is a powerful tool for building and maintaining habits. By keeping track of your habits visually, you can stay motivated, accountable, and focused on your goals. Whether you prefer a simple pen and paper method or a digital app, habit tracking can help you make positive changes in your life and achieve your goals. Number 5. The 2-Minute Rule. The 2-Minute Rule is a simple but powerful strategy for building new habits. The idea behind the 2-minute rule is that any new habit should take less than 2 minutes to do. This makes it easier to get started and build momentum, as the barrier to entry is low. The concept of the 2-minute rule was popularized by James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits. Clear explains that the key to building good habits and breaking bad ones is to start with small, manageable tasks that can be completed in just a few minutes. By focusing on the first two minutes of a new habit, you can make it easy to get started and overcome the inertia that often holds us back from taking action. One of the key insights behind the two-minute rule is that the hardest part of forming a new habit is often getting started. Once you've started, it's much easier to keep going. This is because of a phenomenon known as the progress principle, which states that people are more motivated to continue a task once they've made some progress, no matter how small. By starting with a task that takes less than two minutes to do, 
you set yourself up for success and build momentum that can carry you through to more challenging tasks. The two-minute rule can be applied to a wide range of habits. For example, if you want to start exercising regularly, you might commit to doing just two minutes of stretching or jumping jacks each day. If you want to start reading more, you might commit to reading just two minutes a day. If you want to start meditating, you might commit to meditating for just two minutes each morning. The key is to keep the initial task small and manageable so that you can easily get started and build momentum. Real-life examples of the two-minute rule in action abound. For instance, consider the case of someone who wants to develop a habit of writing every day. Instead of setting a lofty goal of writing for an hour each day, they might start by committing to just two minutes of writing. This could involve jotting down a few sentences or brainstorming ideas for a longer piece. By starting with such a small, manageable task, they make it easy to get started and build momentum. Over time, as the habit becomes more ingrained, they can gradually increase the duration of their writing sessions. The two-minute rule can also be applied to habits that involve breaking bad habits. For example, if someone wants to reduce their time spent on social media, they might start by committing to just two minutes of social media use per day. This could involve quickly checking their notifications or messages and then logging off. By starting with such a small, manageable task, they can begin to break the cycle of mindless scrolling and gradually reduce their overall social media use. The two-minute rule is a powerful tool for building new habits and breaking bad ones. By starting with small, manageable tasks that take less than two minutes to do, you can make it easy to get started and build momentum. Over time, as the habit becomes more ingrained, you can gradually increase the duration or complexity of the task. Whether you're looking to develop a new habit or break a bad one, the two-minute rule can help you achieve your goals and create lasting change in your life. Number 4. The Goldilocks Rule. The Goldilocks Rule is a concept that suggests humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities, not too hard and not too easy, but just right. This principle is based on the idea that tasks that are too difficult can lead to frustration and discouragement, while tasks that are too easy can lead to boredom and complacency. By finding the right balance between challenge and skill, individuals can achieve a state of flow where they are fully immersed in the task at hand and perform at their best. The Goldilocks rule is named after the character Goldilocks from the fairy tale, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, who famously sought out things that were, just right. The concept has been popularized by psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi in his work on flow, a state of optimal experience where people are fully absorbed in what they are doing and feel a sense of energized focus and enjoyment. The Goldilocks rule can be applied to many aspects of life, including work, hobbies, and personal development. For example, in the context of learning a new skill, such as playing a musical instrument, the Goldilocks rule suggests that practicing at a level that is challenging but achievable can lead to faster progress and greater motivation compared to practicing at a level that is either too difficult or too easy. In the workplace, the Goldilocks rule can help managers and employees find the right balance of challenge and support to maximize motivation and performance. Giving employees tasks that are too easy can lead to boredom and disengagement, while giving them tasks that are too difficult can lead to stress and burnout. By finding the right level of challenge for each individual, managers can help their employees achieve a state of flow and perform at their best. The Goldilocks rule can also be applied to goal setting. Setting goals that are challenging but achievable can help motivate individuals to work toward their full potential. Goals that are too easy may not provide enough motivation to push beyond current abilities, while goals that are too difficult may seem overwhelming and unattainable. By setting goals that are just right, individuals can stay motivated and focused on their objectives. The Goldilocks rule highlights the importance of finding the right balance between challenge and skill to maximize motivation and performance. Whether in the workplace, in personal development, or in pursuing hobbies, striving for tasks and goals that are, just right, can lead to a more fulfilling and productive life. Number 3. Reframing. 
Reframing is a powerful technique that involves changing the way you think about something to make it more positive or manageable. When it comes to habits, reframing involves viewing them as a way to build a better future self, rather than as a chore or something you have to do. This shift in perspective can make habits more appealing and sustainable over the long term. One of the key benefits of reframing habits in this way is that it focuses on the long-term benefits rather than the short-term effort. When you see habits as a way to build a better future self, you are more likely to stay motivated and committed, even when the immediate rewards are not immediately apparent. For example, if you're trying to develop a habit of regular exercise, you might reframe it as an investment in your future health and well-being. Instead of thinking of it as something you have to do, you can think of it as something you get to do to improve your quality of life in the long run. This shift in perspective can make exercise more appealing and sustainable over time. Reframing can also help you overcome obstacles and setbacks more easily. When you encounter challenges or setbacks in your habits, such as missing a workout or slipping back into old habits, reframing can help you see these setbacks as temporary and as opportunities to learn and grow. Instead of beating yourself up over a missed workout, you can see it as a chance to recommit to your habit and move forward. Another benefit of reframing habits is that it can help you prioritize your time and energy more effectively. When you see habits as a way to build a better future self, you are more likely to make them a priority in your life and to allocate the necessary time and resources to them. This can help you make progress toward your goals more quickly and effectively. Reframing habits as a way to build a better future self can make them more appealing and sustainable over the long term. By focusing on the long-term benefits rather than the short-term effort, reframing can help you stay motivated and committed to your habits, even when faced with challenges and setbacks. Number 2. Social Norms Social norms are a fundamental aspect of human behavior, influencing how we act, think, and perceive the world around us. These norms are the unwritten rules and expectations that guide behavior within a particular society or group. They shape our habits and behaviors in profound ways, often without us even realizing it. In this discussion, we will explore the role of social norms in shaping our habits, and how understanding them can help us make positive changes in our lives. One of the key ways in which social norms influence our habits is through social reinforcement. When we see others in our social circle engaging in certain behaviors and receiving praise or approval for those behaviors, we are more likely to adopt those behaviors ourselves. For example, if everyone in your office takes a lunchtime walk every day and praises the benefits of this habit, you may be more inclined to start taking a walk during your lunch break as well. Another way in which social norms influence our habits is through social pressure. We may feel pressure to conform to the habits and behaviors of our peers in order to avoid criticism or rejection. For example, if everyone in your friend group is following a certain diet or exercise regimen, you may feel pressure to do the same in order to fit in. Social norms can also be a source of motivation for adopting new habits. When a particular behavior is widely praised and accepted within a community, it can create a social environment that encourages and supports that behavior. For example, the widespread adoption of recycling programs in many communities can be attributed in part to the social norm of environmental responsibility. However, social norms can also be a barrier to change. When a behavior is deeply ingrained in a culture or community, it can be difficult to break away from that norm, even if the behavior is harmful or unhealthy. For example, smoking was once widely accepted and even encouraged in many societies, but social norms have shifted over time to recognize the health risks associated with smoking. Understanding the role of social norms in shaping our habits can help us make positive changes in our lives. By recognizing the influence of social norms, we can consciously choose which norms to follow and which to challenge. For example, if you want to adopt a healthier lifestyle, you can seek out social groups that support and encourage healthy behaviors, rather than those that promote unhealthy habits. Social norms play a powerful role in shaping our habits and behaviors. They influence how we act, think, and perceive the world around us.
By understanding the influence of social norms, we can better understand why we behave the way we do and how we can use this knowledge to create positive changes in our lives. Number 1. Reward Substitution. Reward substitution is a powerful strategy for breaking bad habits and replacing them with healthier alternatives. This approach is based on the idea that habits are often formed and maintained because they provide some form of reward or benefit. By identifying the underlying reward of a bad habit and finding a healthier alternative that provides a similar reward, you can change your behavior and break the habit. One common example of reward substitution is replacing the reward you get from snacking on unhealthy foods with a more positive alternative. Many people turn to snacks high in sugar or fat as a way to cope with stress or boredom, but these habits can lead to negative health consequences over time. By identifying the underlying reward of this habit, such as seeking comfort or distraction, you can find a healthier alternative that provides a similar reward. For example, instead of reaching for a bag of chips when you feel stressed, you could try going for a walk, practicing deep breathing, or calling a friend for support. Another example of reward substitution is replacing the reward you get from smoking with a more positive alternative. Smoking is often used as a way to relax or take a break, but it can have serious health implications. By identifying the underlying reward of smoking, such as relaxation or stress relief, you can find a healthier alternative that provides a similar reward. For example, instead of smoking a cigarette, you could try practicing mindfulness, doing a few minutes of yoga, or going for a brisk walk. Reward substitution can also be applied to other areas of life, such as breaking the habit of excessive screen time. Many people spend hours each day on their phones, computers, or other devices, which can lead to a sedentary lifestyle and poor sleep habits. By identifying the underlying reward of this habit, such as entertainment or connection with others, you can find a healthier alternative that provides a similar reward. For example, instead of spending hours scrolling through social media, you could try reading a book, engaging in a hobby, or spending time with loved ones. One of the key benefits of reward substitution is that it helps to break the cycle of habituation. When you replace the reward you get from a bad habit with a healthier alternative, you are not only breaking the habit itself but also creating new, healthier habits in its place. Over time, these new habits can become ingrained, making it easier to maintain positive behaviors and avoid falling back into old habits.